Hey guys, welcome back to yet another Halo tier list. Now, I know I say this every single tier list, but I'm going to say it again. Today's tier list, as you can see, is an absolute behemoth. Today, we are ranking every single Halo map from Halo 1 through to Halo Infinite. No Halo Wars or Halo Wars 2 maps included in this, just the FPS games. Um, and we have a lot of maps to go over. All the maps are categorized by their respective games in a chronological order. And within those categories, they're also sorted alphabetically. So everything is going to be nice and neatly sorted. If you want to skip to a specific game on the time bar down below, there'll be chapters for each game. So you can go to it if you want to. And I'm going to try and stick to about 30 seconds per map because... Well, like I just said, we have a lot of maps to cover today. 156, I believe, to be precise. So, yes, let's waste no more time and jump right in. Starting off, we have what I believe is Battle Canyon from Halo 1. This map has had so many remakes that I always forget which one is which, but I think in Halo 1, it's Battle Canyon. And Battle Canyon is going to go into A tier, a good one to start off with. It's a pretty standard arena map, to be fair. Red base, blue base, in a nice comfy little canyon. Not a massively complicated layout by any means. Nice and simple, but it's got some cool ways to play it with the teleporters at the back of the bases, and it's one of the original competitive Halo maps, so it gets A tier for those reasons alone. Blood Gorge, a map that is easily the most iconic Halo map of all time, and honestly, I would hazard a guess that it's probably the most iconic FPS map of all time, to be quite honest with you. It's definitely up there with, like, Dust 2 and High Rise from Modern Warfare 2. Blood Gorge, I'm going to put in S tier. I don't think Blood Gorge is actually that amazing of a map. Don't get me wrong, it's really, really, really good, but there are definitely better BTV maps out there. It's a little too simple. However, that said, you can't ignore the fact that a what, like, eight-figure company was created because of this map with Red versus Blue, which is pretty wild, and I think it's fair to say that we all have a lot of memories on Blood Gulch or any of its remakes over the years. Oh, boarding action. This one is going to go in A tier as well. I'm a massive, massive sucker for the weirder maps in Halo 1, which is why you're going to see the Halo 1 maps probably be weighted more towards the top of the tier list in this video as opposed to the bottom. There are going to be a few rankings that might make you scratch your head a little bit, but I just love Halo 1's more obscure map design that we just don't get in any games nowadays, and boarding action is a fantastic example of that. The map hasn't got like a good competitive layout by any chance, but it's just such a fun and unique layout for a map. You know what, I can't believe they never remade boarding action with Reach, considering that game had a jetpack. Boarding action with jetpacks would have been so fun. Instead, we got Sword Base. Chill Out. Chill Out is also going to go into A tier uh, beneath boarding action. I love Chill Out. It's a great kind of arena-ish map. Um, again, it's another one of those very unconventional layout maps that has a very cool aesthetic to it. That's another thing with the CE maps. The CE maps have aesthetics and vibes to them that are just unparalleled by any other game. It's a, very much like a symptom of early 2000s slash late 90s multiplayer arena shooters, and I love that. Uh, yeah, I think Chill Out's a great map, but it's not fantastic. Ho oh, ho, this is gonna confuse some people. Chiron. Chiron is gonna go at the top of S tier. I can't give it S plus tier, but this is like the epitome of weird map design. The weird, weird map design that Halo 1 had, and it's the map design that I wish we had nowadays. Again, this is not a competitive map by any means. The most fun game type on Chiron is like infinite ammo free-for-all flamethrowers. It's just pure craziness. Having like 13, I think it is, different rooms separated by teleporters with a layout that no one really understands even to this day is such a cool, unique layout for a map that I've never seen replicated anywhere else, not just in Halo, but also in gaming. Damnation. Damnation is a fantastic competitive and casual map. Going to go in A tier right at the top. I love its verticality and the different ways of going around it, and also the setting of the map's really cool as well. I believe it's on a moon uh, that the Covenant are using to build hydro processing plants or something, and this is one of those plants. Very cool setting, very cool atmosphere, and a very unique layout. Danger Canyon. Now, I really like Danger Canyon. It's going to go in A tier. I'd say just a bit below Damnation. Danger Canyon is one of those massive combat evolved BTB maps that is probably too big for the game, but I kind of appreciate that. We've never had maps the size of that again, besides maybe Spire in Reach, and I kind of miss it. It's also got this really, really cool room in the middle of one of the cliff sides as well that I'm a big fan of that has this really cool aura to it. And you know what? More so, a lot of the hallways that go into the cliff sides on this map are very cool. Death Island, our first S plus tier map. This, in my opinion, is possibly the most underrated Halo map of all time. They literally took the silent cartographer and converted it into a BTB map 
and then let you go on top of the cliffs as well. This is such a fantastic, unique BTB map that it's such a shame that back in the day it was only on CEPC, but thanks to MCC, we can all play it in matchmaking now. I've never played a BTB map that feels more like a big team battle map than Death Island, if that makes any sense. Like, BTB maps fit BTB, don't get me wrong, but this feels like a map for a massive war, and that's what every game always feels like on it. There's just something about flying a banshee through the cliffsides, through the tunnels, and over the beaches, flying over scorpions and over warthogs and stuff. It's very much a vehicular map over, like, infantry combat. You can fight infantry, like, on the cliffsides and stuff, don't get me wrong, but it's very much a vehicular map, and I would absolutely love to see a remake of it in Infinite. Oh, Derek. Right, Derelict, I'm not a fan of the layout that much, however, this map has one of the best atmospheres in any map ever. I'm going to put it in A tier at the bottom for now, but A tier. Like I said, the layout's like, it's alright, it's a great competitive map, but the layout doesn't really do too much for me, but what does is the atmosphere, the ambient sound of Derelict, and also just this dark, alien, mysterious, ancient ship floating in the middle of space is just... Such a cool vibe. It really has that late 90s slash early 2000s sci-fi aesthetic that Halo 1 had so much of. It really embodies that so well. And I just, I every time I, I load into Derelict to like get footage for a video or something, I just end up spending like 10 minutes walking around it, just soaking in the ambient sounds. I love Derelict's atmosphere so much and it wins on that alone. Jephyrophobia. Yes, I can pronounce it. This is going to go in A tier right at the top. This is another one of those huge, huge BTB maps for CE, that, the size of which has never really been matched since. Um, and I personally like it a lot. I think the layout with the massive bridge in the middle and then like the two massive balconies down the side is a very unique layout that we've never had in the map since. Again, it's a mostly vehicular dominated BTB map, but I kind of think that's the point with BTB, right? Like, you've got 4v4 arena for like infantry combat mostly. BTB is where vehicles should shine, and Jephyrophobia is a map where they absolutely do. In particular, the Warthog, but mostly the Banshee. Flying a Banshee around this map and doing strafe runs on snipers on the balcony or on people skirmishing on the bridge is so cool. And of course, who can forget this absolutely god-tier mysterious foreigner aesthetic? Such a good map, very underrated. Hang'em High, one of the best competitive maps ever made for gaming. S plus tier, little bit below Death Island. I think Hang'em High is incredible. Again, it's got this like real mysterious otherworldly atmosphere to it where you've just got no idea like where you are, what this location is meant to be or anything about the map at all. But the layout is just so damn good for competitive. Great power positions, unique weapon and power up spawns that really mix up gameplay when they spawn. Just an overall fantastic map for competitive and also for casual as well. That's another thing. Pretty much all of CE's maps are fantastic for casual and then a few of them are also fantastic for competitive as well, which is the balance that maps should have. Icefield, this is another pretty underrated BTB map. I'm gonna put it at the top of B tier. I definitely don't love Icefields. I love its aesthetic, actually, don't get me wrong. I love the aesthetic and the skybox of it, um, but the layout itself is, it's good. I'd say it's good. Um, I like the small bridge in the middle that connects the like two ice caverns, and I love the fact that the map is entirely ice, so anyone driving a warthog is gonna have a bad day and is gonna ultimately end up getting booted for accidentally skidding into a teammate and betraying them. Okay, so I'm recording this after the fact. There's three maps, one from Halo 1 and two from Halo 2 that I forgot to put in the tier list. There's like 160 maps here. Give me a break, right? I was gonna forget one or two. The first one is actually one of my favorites, Infinity, the Halo 1 BTB map that I absolutely love. This is one of those staple like Halo 1, late 90s, early 2000s era maps that's really, really really big, has a really unique layout. The whole map is literally an, what's it called? The infinity symbol. I forgot what the infinity symbol was called, but it is an infinity symbol. Um, but I love the scale of infinity. I love how big and grand everything feels in this map. And it's one that I would have loved to have seen come back in infinite. I feel like the center area with all the bridges would have worked really well with a grapple hook. So I'm going to put infinity in S tier near the top. It's not quite S plus tier, but it is one of my favorite BTB maps in Halo 1, and it's one that I would love to see come back one day. Longest. Right, okay, so I'm going to put this in a C tier because the layout is weird and not that great. But the atmosphere, again, like the real, real, like ominous atmosphere of the red hallways in particular is just makes me love this map but because of its layout it's a very simple very very claustrophobic and to be honest not really that dynamic layout so i've got to give it c tier but like i said that red corridor in particular is just beautiful 
Prisoner, yet another fantastic competitive map. Prisoner's gonna go in between Chiron and Blood Gorge. I think Prisoner is absolutely fantastic, notably for competitive. I think out of all of Halo 1's maps, this is probably like the most competitive map because of the verticality, which makes it quite punishing for casual play a lot of the time. Um, but then again, like I said, it's still really good for casual play as well. Uh, navigating the map and getting up to the upper levels at first is quite frustrating, but when you learn the layout of the map, you learn where the ladders are, where the ramps are and stuff, it starts to get a bit more accessible and enjoyable. Rat Race. I'm going to put this in B tier at the top of B tier. I do like Rat Race quite a lot. Again, like all of Combat Evolved maps, very unique layout. I like the caverns you can go in uh, above like the regular environment that have the power-ups in them that you have to shoot or melee to knock down. That's always pretty cool. And I also like the map's emphasis on teleporters as well. Any map that has an emphasis on either teleporters or grav lifts and man cannons, I kind of have a soft spot for and this is definitely one of them. And just like the rest of Halo one is four in the maps it just has this really mysterious and ever so slightly ominous vibe to it a few years ago in fact i made a video about the mysterious atmosphere and kind of semi pseudo lore for all hello what hello one is maps and i still love that video because all the things in that video are just like emotions that those maps have made me feel since 2002 and i don't know just something about these maps has just the atmosphere is perfect sidewinder i'm not sure where to put this i'm probably gonna put it B tier alongside uh, Ice Fields. I do like Sidewinder as a BTB map, but I think out of all the BTB maps in Halo 1, it's definitely not my favorite. That said though, I prefer it to its remake in Halo 3 Avalanche. I was never a massive fan of Avalanche as you'll see later. Um, I always preferred Sidewinder. That bit at the back of the map where the camo and overshield spawn, where it's like this slotted wall where both teams can get to it and they can shoot each other through the wall, but they can't go through the wall. I always thought it was quite an interesting form of, of level design. Uh, but other than that, it's a relatively simple map. Timberland, probably the comfiest Halo map of all time. Uh, I'm going to put Timberland again in B tier, just a bit above Sidewinder. Um, it's a bit more of a claustrophobic BTB map, and because of Halo 1's vehicle physics, it can be a little bit clunky at times because of how hilly it is. But man, that Pacific Northwest atmosphere with the evergreen trees and the alpine rock faces and the streams is just so damn comfy. I, I like it for that alone. Oh, and this little waterfall area, whoever designed this, I love you. I would love to live in this like little kind of like, I don't know, waterfall cavern area here. It's just so comfy. Wizard. Wizard, I've never been a fan of Wizard or any of its remakes. I'm going to put it in a C tier above longest. Um, I don't know. It's just a bit too simple for me. Granted, it does rely heavily on teleporters, and one of the main skillful mechanics of the map is learning the teleporters, learning where each one goes, and learning how to predict which one people are going to go through, which is definitely a cool kind of skill and mechanic, but at the same time, I don't know. I've never really been a massive fan of Wizard or Warlock or any of its remakes. Right then, on to Halo 2. Starting off, we have Ascension. Ascension is going to go into... I'm not entirely sure, actually. I'm going to go at the bottom of A tier for now. I think Ascension is a really good map. Uh, very cool aesthetic, very cool setting for a map as well. For some reason, it always reminded me of a Turok Evolution map. I don't know why. I think Ascension is pretty good. Sniping on it is always very, very satisfying. Uh, but this is not the only time you'll ever hear me say this, but I actually think that the Forge remake of it in Reach was a bit better, even though it was exactly the same. I just have more fun in the Forge remake, but who can who can go wrong with the super bounces on, Asc on Ascension, right? This map has so much legacy to it. It's one of the most iconic Halo 2 maps, I would say. Um, I also love, of course, a dynamic rotating, like, antenna in the middle of the map. I don't know what it's meant to be, but that's always a cool mechanic as well. Uh, yeah, good map overall, but I wouldn't say it's anything fantastic. Backwash. I actually really like Backwash. I'm going to put it at the top of B tier above Rat's Nest, or Rat's Rat, Rat Race. I am a big sucker for maps that kind of leverage natural terrain to create cover and, and skirmish points over just putting down blocks or walls or whatever, and Backwash does that quite a lot. But at the same time as well, I love, of course, the, the spire in the middle is very cool. It's got a very cool aesthetic to it. And so do the little, like, mysterious rooms at the back as well. And, of course, having... I think it's meant to be Penitent Tangent flying around the map, right? It's pretty cool. But the thing that I love most about Backwash, I'm sure you predicted it by now, <laughs> is the aesthetic. I absolutely adore the aesthetic of this map. It's just, like, peak 
peak mysterious foreboding flood atmosphere with loads of flood fog in one of the swamp forests from Halo 1 from V43 Guilty Spark. Just a great, great atmosphere with a pretty good overall layout, I would say. It's nothing special, it's nothing fantastic, but I'd say it's firmly a B-tier map. Some people hate backwash, but I can never hate backwash. It's, I just love its atmosphere too much. Beaver Creek, which I believe is what it's called in Halo 2, the remake of Battle Canyon from Halo 1. I prefer Beaver Creek to Battle Canyon. I'm just going to put it slightly above Battle Canyon. Uh, it plays pretty much exactly the same, to be quite honest with you, but I don't know why. I always just found myself enjoying it a bit more. I'd say that I prefer the aesthetic and kind of colours of Battle Canyon, but from a gameplay perspective, I prefer Beaver Creek. Ooh, Burial Mounds. This is a very underrated map. Burial Mounds, I'm going to put... Uh, Above Danger Canyon in A tier. I, again, this is one of those weird kind of obscure maps that no one ever really talks about that I just happen to love quite a lot. It's set on a cut level from Halo 2's campaign called Alpha Moon, I think it was, where you were meant to fight the heretic and his faction on a moon. Um, but I just, I love its layout for some reason. I think it's a very interesting kind of infantry meets light to mid vehicle combat map. Uh, the kind of destroyed structure in the middle with the turret was also quite good for CTF to hold out in. And the many like walkways that go through the cliff face with the sword and stuff were pretty cool for engagements as well. Risky to go through, but if you got the sword, of course, it's Halo 2's sword, so it was worth the risk. Coagulation, which is Blood Gulch's remake in Halo 2. I'm going to put this at the bottom of B tier. I was never a massive fan of Coagulation, to be honest with you. I always thought that um, Blood Gulch was significantly better. Uh, I don't know why, I just didn't really like it as much. It's the exact same layout as far as I'm aware, I don't think anything's different, it just plays in Halo 2 over Halo 1, but for some reason I just found that it played better in Halo 1. Colossus! This is another map that I don't love, I'd say Colossus is probably top of B tier. I love the aesthetic because it's set on the gas mine from the Arbiter levels in Halo 2, which is one of my favourite aesthetics in gaming, like, full stop. So a map set in that aesthetic, in that location, is very, very cool. And I love how the map uses conveyor belts as well to kind of feed you into either the man cannon that launches you up to the beam rifle or into the pits to fall to your doom. Very cool kind of pseudo map hazard there. The gameplay of the map though is pretty simple, it's basically just who can control the top balcony with the beam rifle on it, and it also spawns like down at the back of the room or in the side hallways, essentially has to work to push back to that balcony, which is alright, I mean it's only really a map fit for Team Slayer, I couldn't particularly imagine playing anything else on it, but it works well for Team Slayer and it has a fantastic aesthetic. Contamination! This is another one of those weird BTV maps that, of course, your boy just so happens to love. Contamination, I'm going to put an A tier just below Jafirophobia. Of course, it's set, I believe the, the idea is it's meant to be like a flood containment zone, like a containment lockdown zone or something, which is really cool. But it has the unique quirk of in the kind of no man zone in between two bases, the bouncy fusion coils that you can like knock around in vehicles and stuff, which was a really, really cool idea for like a natural map hazard that you could use to your advantage to launch into the enemy team. I also like the design of the two bases as well, how you can actually lock them down, but if you can infiltrate the enemy's base, you can go and open their gate and take their flag out or take the bomb in or whatever. I think it played really well on like flag modes or neutral bomb assault or two bomb assault. It was great for objective modes, not so much for Slayer, but it's a snowy flood map in a cool rusty old base with a unique map hazard. I love it for that alone. Desolation. This is the remake of Derelict from Halo 1 that was in Halo 2. Um, I'm going to put it in B tier, around probably bottom of B tier. I do actually love its different aesthetic. I think the idea is that it's meant to be like a foreigner spire or something that's been taken over by a jungle on Delta Halo or Alpha Halo, one of the two. And I do really like that aesthetic, but aesthetic wise, it can't even come close to Derelict. Derelict's aesthetic is just beautiful. Um, I did think this map played noticeably worse in Halo 2 than it did in Halo 1. Um, it relied on man cannons, uh, or rather the, the added man cannons to get you up to like top mid, and quite a few more ways to get to like the top balconies compared to the bottom balconies with like these really closed dark staircases and stuff that were okay, but they ended up getting like a little bit clusterfucky I found. Next up we have the first of our two Halo 2 maps that I forgot from the initial list. District. Now this map was a Halo 2 Vista exclusive map, so if you haven't played it much then I don't blame you, but personally I really really like District. Halo 2's strengths in me, especially in its big team battle maps, 
were the urban environments. Halo 1 didn't have anything like that, so maps like Headlong were so, and Turf were so good for the kind of thing. And District was like a big team battle version of Turf that felt like you were actually fighting in Old Mombasa with some really familiar looking areas, but then also some areas that were completely new, that felt grounded, but also very futuristic, and obviously like they were meant to be set in the Halo universe. A very unique map that I really enjoy. I'm gonna put District top of A tier. Uh, on par with Jafirophobia. Elongation. This is the remake. I, I don't know why Longest of all maps got a remake from Halo 1 and Halo 2, but it did. It's a remake of Longest, but I actually think Elongation is pretty good. It's going to go bottom of B tier. Um, it doesn't have as cool of an aesthetic as Longest does, but its gameplay is so much better because it leverages conveyor belts that not only you can stand on and get taken down the map, but also have blocks on them that you can use as dynamic cover or you can just grenade them about. It's a very cool idea that, I, again, I'd love to see a map like reuse those conveyor belts at some point. I think, didn't someone leak a few months ago, there was like a really early work in progress picture of a map for Infinite that looked like Elongation. I'd love to see a map like that remade with, with conveyor belts that have things on them that you can use for like dynamic cover or that you can move down the conveyor belts to affect the enemy team or to help yours. It's a very cool idea for a map and although the layout overall is pretty much the same as Longest, it spiced the map up and made it a lot more interesting to play. Foundation. Now, I'm not a massive fan of this map, so I'm going to put it at the bottom of C tier. However, I'm going to sing its praises because it's very unique. It's the only map in Halo that was actually a remake from Marathon, which I think is actually really cool. Even though I don't particularly enjoy it, I don't really like it that much. I think it's a very simple layout. And to be fair, considering it came from a 90s Doom inspired multiplayer game, kind of makes sense. I mean, they weren't exactly designing maps like Prisoner, were they, for those games? But um, yeah, it's pretty boring layout overall, very open areas that just end up being like grenade like messes I find, but it's pretty cool that it's inspired by or a remake of a marathon map. Gemini, this is a pretty underrated map. Gemini is going to go above backwash, uh, I'd say Gemini is on par with Colossus for me. Uh, again, I think the layout is kind of unique for the most part. It leverages teleporters quite a lot, which is really cool. But the big winner here for me is the aesthetic of the map. Set in like the Prophet's inner sanctums and high charity with a massive hologram of a Prophet holding a halo ring beneath a waterfall with a massive like holy tree at the back. That's such a cool aesthetic. I love that so much. It's very, very unique. We've never had another map like that before. That blend of like very artificial covenant architecture with the very natural architecture of the waterfall and of course the tree was very unique. Headlong. Headlong is going into S plus tier above Hang'em High. I think Headlong is one of the best BTB maps in Halo full, full stop. Um, the layout is super, super different to anything we've really had since. A very urban design for a map, which is obviously fitting for Halo 2 standards. Um, I loved how it was very fit for vehicles. Like there were a lot of open areas down below for vehicles, but at the same time, you could skirmish really well inside the skyscrapers and in the maintenance buildings and the stairways and stuff. It really felt like a natural urban city environment. The fact that the girder was affected by gravity I always thought was really, really sick and made it kind of perilous to walk over when somebody else was in a banshee. Um, but another massive dub for this map for me is that this is going to sound really specific, right? But it has this kind of early 2000s industrial like orange vibe to it. So a lot of like sci-fi games in the early 2000s and not even necessary sci-fi games, other games as well, had this real specific like dark orange hue for like industrial futuristic human cities. Halo 2 had it, Turok Evolution had it, and they're obviously two seminal games for me growing up, two games that I played a lot at the same time growing up, so that's probably why I think that, but uh, quite a lot of other games had that vibe as well, and I just have a real soft spot for it, so that makes me love Headlong even more, but all that subjective stuff aside, I think Headlong is a fantastic BTB map. Ivory Tower. Iconic, but I never thought Ivory Tower was fantastic really. I'd say it's better than boarding action, better than Beaver Creek and Battle Creek. I'd say there. It's a good map. I think it plays pretty well. Um, I liked it in Reach as well with Reflection, pretty much the same as Halo 2. Uh, very clear kind of high ground that you've got to get with the balcony with a sniper. I did always like the, the elevator and how many unique fights you'd get on the elevator when like you were stood there waiting for it to come and someone would either like shoot down on you or you'd be going up the elevator and somebody would jump up from the ground and like lunge up to you with a sword. So many cool moments can be made from that elevator alone um, that I, I did like that a lot. Lockout. Lockout, I mean, there's no other place for Lockout than S plus tier. 
Lockout, I would say, is on par with Sanctuary, spoilers for later on, as one of, if not the best competitive map in gaming full stop. I put Lockout up there with like Dust2 in terms of competitive quality. It's fantastic for casual game modes as well, like Team Sword, Team Duels, uh, just any kind of casual game mode, like Oddball as well. But competitive Team Slayer, Oddball and King of the Hill on Lockout are just something else. This map has such a damn good layout. It's a great asymmetric map that has its good share of verticality, but also unique ways to navigate the map. You've got the grav lifts, you've got loads of jumps on ledges you can do. There are so many ways to navigate this map. There are so many power positions as well. You can hold snipe tower and lock that down. You can hold library and lock that down in objective modes. You can hold BR tower and lock that down. And there are so many ways to break those setups as well, which is what a good competitive map has. It's got to have a lot of robust setups, but at the same time, it's got to have a load of ways for you to break those setups with a well-organized coordinated push. And Lockout is just the epitome of that. What a fantastic, absolutely beautiful map. Oh, and of course, how could I forget? There's the fact there's a flood containment facility, an icy, snowy flood containment facility, which just makes me love it more than I somehow already do. Oh look, another one of the best competitive maps in human history. Midship is also gonna go on par with Lockout. I would say that I prefer Lockout a tiny bit more to Midship, but Midship is still one of the best competitive like 4v4 arena maps ever made in human history. Besides the fact that it's a fantastic symmetrical 4v4 map that's great for Team Slayer and also Oddball and CTF as well with loads of really unique CTF routes like throwing it bottom mid and then throwing it up into your window and having a teammate catch it. It's also got a great aesthetic, but most importantly, it has a really, really unique trait that you never really see in matchmaking, but if you go into customs, you can experience it. If you all get brute shots, you can shoot that mid platform and actually like dislodge it from the gravity beams and have it fly around the map. That mid platform is completely gravity based. You can you can affect that however you want, which is something that games just don't do even remotely nowadays that I do miss. Relic. I thought Relic was decent. I would say Relic's probably top of B tier. It's a good like probably 5v5 skirmish mode. I always think it's a bit too small for big team battle but a bit too big for 4v4. It's like a 5v5 or 6v6 squad battle kind of kind of map that I think is pretty good for that, honestly. Neutral modes like neutral bomb assault and neutral flag are probably the best modes for this because the defending teams spawn in that really cool relic tower and the route that the attackers have to take to get into it is quite interesting because they have to go all the way to the end of the beach and then back up towards the base. Cool layout. Um, not my favorite map by any means, but I do like it. Oh, look, here we go, Sanctuary. I'm gonna put Sanctuary just slightly below Lockout, but honestly, Lockout, Sanctuary, and Midship for me are all tied. They're about as good as each other. They are, for me, the three best Halo maps of all time, and the three best, like, first-person shooting maps of all time. I couldn't think of anything that really comes close to those three maps for me. Aesthetically, Sanctuary's so comfy. Old ruins taken over by the natural world with a real comfy stream running through the middle that's like partially integrated into the architecture itself, which is so cool. But then layout wise, I mean, absolutely superb symmetrical map. One of those beautiful two sniper maps as well, where at the start of a game, each team has a dedicated sniper that goes and gets the sniper and has a snipe off with the other team's sniper. And again, because of the layout being so good, there are so many ways they can do that. They can jump onto Carbine and shoot into their base. They can jump to Ring 3 and shoot down towards their sniper hut. They can shoot through Ring 2. There are just so, so many ways to skirmish with a sniper alone on this map. It's fantastic for just about every game mode humanly possible, really. King of the Hill, Slayer, Oddball, Neutral Bomb Assault, Regular Assault, Neutral Flag, CTF, just superb, superb map. I couldn't remember until recently that this is actually a DLC map for Halo 2. I always assumed that it launched with Halo 2, but it didn't. It was a DLC map for it, and man, <laughs> what a DLC map Sanctuary was. Good Lord. Terminal. Look at that. Another S plus tier map. It's going to go just a little bit below Death Island. Terminal is a BTB map that I cannot believe has never been remade. The unique trait of having the train, the train of death come through the middle of the map as a natural map hazard was so good. And putting the sword and overshield actually on the train tracks, whoever designed that, whoever thought of those placements for those weapons and power ups, 
Bravo. It's another map with a more urban style of warfare, with some vehicles to be fair, although where the, where the reef spawns is pretty claustrophobic, it normally just ends in it getting boarded, but you've got the reef and the gorse hog to face off with each other, you've got the cent central area with the train going through where people always fight, and then you've got like the parking lot, and then the, the, the repair shop as well that you can fight in, very urban style environments, which I really like, and I honestly miss from Halo quite a lot. Yeah, Terminal, like... Please tell me why Terminal has never been remade. I, I will never understand why this map has never had a remake. Tombstone, the remake of Hang'em High in Halo 2. Now, I never thought this map played very well in Halo 2, to be honest with you. I love Hang'em High, as you can see, S plus tier, but Tombstone, I'm going to put in C tier. Um probably top of C tier, I'd say. But it's bonus points for me. It doesn't win very much in terms of layout because it doesn't really work with Halo 2's gameplay, in my opinion. But it has that really, really cool early 2000s slash late 90s futuristic industrial human city vibe to it that I absolutely love. Oh, and it also has a Halo 1 Magnum hidden on it that sadly we can't use, if only. Turf. This is a great map. S tier. Bottom of S tier right now. I think Turf is another one of those just drastically underrated maps that's fantastic for 4v4 and 5v5. It's one of those 4v4 vehicle maps that when you look at the layout of it, it seems like a vehicle wouldn't work on it, but the Ghost and also the Warthog do work pretty well in the streets area. But then the urban warfare sections as well are really, really cool. Very tight, very close quarters, but with quite a lot of flanking routes that I appreciate and also a little bit of verticality as well. And for our final forgotten Halo 2 map, we have Uplift, yet again, another Halo 2 Vista exclusive that, once again, you've probably not played, but once again, your boy happens to love. It's got a fantastic aesthetic, that's part of it, I think, the kind of really enigmatic beam tower sort of construct at the end of the bridge in the ocean looks really really cool and i always loved fighting down that bridge to the beam tower and then also like all the flanking rooms in the caves at the side are really cool i don't have much to say about uplift but i do really like it and i think it's one of those maps that is underrated purely because barely anybody's played it it never comes up in mcc it must have like less than a one percent weighting in btb which is a shame because i think it's a pretty decent map so i'm gonna put it in a tier uh i would say not yeah below damnation and above burial mounts now is it warlord or warlock i think it's warlock in halo 2 isn't it i mean again i'm gonna put it on par with wizard i prefer warlock to wizard but same layout um I'd say it probably played better in Halo 2, to be honest with you. In fact, I'll move it up to the top of C tier. It played better in Halo 2, but again, not a massive fan. Waterworks. Waterworks is another S plus tier BTB map at the bottom of S plus tier. Having the stalactites that you can shoot off the roof and take out banshees or vehicles or, if you're lucky, other infantry with them was such a cool idea. And also having a map set inside a massive cavern with light breaking through the roof was a really cool layout. I love the foreigner structure in the middle as well. I don't know what it was meant to be, but I remember it had this really cool piston inside that used to move up and down that I liked a lot. Yeah, fantastic BTB map. Another one of those maps, like terminal that i just can't believe has never been remade i can kind of understand death island because it was a halo 1 pc map like fair enough it was really niche but come on waterworks and terminal how have they never been remade I... <sighs> Next up, Zanzibar. Zanzibar is going to go at the top of S tier for me. I love, love, love Zanzibar. So much better than Last Resort, if you ask me. Um, the layout, of course, having the beach and the seawall was really cool, feeding into like a human facility. But the biggest draw for this map is the windmill. A windmill that actually affects your gravity that you can use to either get to the upper level of that facility or just go around the windmill and fall off was such a cool idea. And then for neutral game moves like neutral bomb assault and neutral flag as well, the fact that the base at the back can be locked down, or rather the fact that the base at the back can be unlocked by invaders, made for a great, great map for those game types. There's just something so special about invading the enemy's base, opening the gates and having your warthogs and ghosts roll in, take the flag and roll out. That gameplay is, uh, yeah, kind of missed, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Right, moving on to Halo 2 Anniversary. Next we have, what's it called? Um, it's a remake of Coagulation, Bloodline. Um, I mean, it's just Coagulation, but in H2A. Uh, uh, B tier. The EMP towers were a cool idea. And actually, I just remember this map has the Hornet on it. Because for some reason, Halo 2 Anniversary has the Hornet. 
I'm not sure why, fair enough, but I'm not going to complain. Uh, the EMP towers in the bases were a cool idea, cool dynamic map element to make it easier for you to defend against attackers, especially because of the Hornet. In fact, I'm assuming that's why they added those. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just coagulation again, which I'm not a huge fan of. Lockdown, the remake of Lockout. This is going to go in A tier. Uh, I would say, uh, uh, yeah, top of A tier, to be honest with you. Um... It's a lot worse than Lockout for me because I don't like the stalactites on this map. I like the idea of stalactites, but I don't like where they are because my biggest like praise for Lockout originally, like I said earlier, was the fact that despite how many like really rigid setups it had, like BR Tower and Snipe Tower, there were also so many ways for the team that were being pinned down by those setups to coordinate and break them. If one team had really coordinated to build a setup in Snipe Tower, for example, but then they lost it, it never felt cheese that you lost that setup. But in lockdown, because of where the stalactites are, it always did feel cheese. Like if your team had set up on like BR Tower, for example, and then the enemy team spawn elbow, they just put two BR bursts above you and a stalactite comes down and just kills your entire team. Same with Snipe Tower as well. And I didn't, I didn't really like that. Remnant, the remake of Relic in Halo 2 Anniversary is going to go just on par with Relic. It's, it's pretty much exactly the same, to be honest with you. Um, I, actually, to be fair, I'll give it praise for one thing. The skybox on this map is quite possibly the best skybox Halo has ever had. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I'll be honest, I think it's a little bit weird that of all the maps they chose to remake from Halo 2, despite the fact that Waterworks and Terminal have never been remade, they remade Relic. Little bit odd, but it's decent. Shrine, the remake of Sanctuary. This is going to go at the bottom of S tier because, yeah, it had some changes like Lockdown did compared to Lockout, but they weren't ag as egregious as Lockdown's changes. You could shoot the waterfalls uh, and waterfalls would come down and cover your base and make it so people couldn't look into your base, which at first seems really OP. But if you just zoom in with a BR or a sniper, you can see like red names behind the water, so it's not too bad. It didn't really affect the map much anyway. I'd say this is a really good remake of, of Sanctuary, quite honestly. Uh, not quite as good as the original one because the ring two to ring three jump was made quite a lot easier that was the one change that i didn't like and there's also grav lifts as well uh under in the shotgun tunnels that lifted you up to the base but i didn't really find them to be too bad the only change that i didn't like was making the ring two to ring three jump harder easier but other than that great remake i'd say stone town the remake of zanzibar again i it's basically the same as Zanzibar. I can't rank it worse or better because it's pretty much the same. Again, I definitely preferred Zanzibar and Halo 2 to any of its remakes, but this was a really good remake. I can't fault it. Warlock or Warlord or whatever the hell this HOA remake of Wizard and the Halo 2 version is. I still don't like the layout, but uh, this is going to seem weird, right? I'm going to be honest. It's going in S tier because it has one of the coolest and most unique Forerunner aesthetics in Halo full stop. The, the aesthetic of this map always reminded me of Minas Morgul from Lord of the Rings, which is just a massive dub for me personally. I loved it. Very unique layout. The storm was fantastic. The green kind of mist in, in the air was, was great as well. And I'm not going to touch on lore much in this video, but the fact that it was dedicated to Forerunner warrior servants who died fighting the flood just gave it so much more cool context as well. And finally, we have the remake of Ascension that I didn't like in Halo Anniversary at all. It's going to go to the bottom seat here. I don't like the shields in the middle of the map. They make fighting in top mid a bit too easy, I found, even though they were very, very situational and were never really used for that. Um, but the thing that I dislike the most is the aesthetic. I, it uses like Halo 4 and Halo 5's 4 in aesthetic that I'm not a fan of. Uh, and I, I just don't enjoy it as much. Although I will say one cool thing is that when you stand at the edge of the map and look down, you can actually see the halo ring moving beneath you because you're just like, I think you're just out of the atmosphere or just like the top of the atmosphere. So you can see the halo ring rotating beneath you, which is very, very cool. Right then, moving on to Halo 3's maps. We're starting off with assembly, which I'm going to put top of B tier. I always actually really enjoyed assembly um, in free-for-alls mostly, not really team-based modes. Besides Team Snipers, Team Snipers and it's pretty fun, but I think it's a pretty good free for all map, um, but it's, it's decent, it's nothing too special, I'd say. There are some pretty cool HLG spot it, spots on it, I won't lie, uh, but I can't, re <laughs> I can't really rank maps based on how good they are for HLG. I enjoyed it, but it doesn't really stand out for me. Avalanche, the remake of Sidewinder. Avalanche, B tier again. I was never a massive fan of this. I remember really enjoying it when the Legendary Map Pack first came out, but... In MCC, I just don't really find it that fun. I did like how they put snow textures on all the vehicles in this map, which was very unique. That's a nice, cool little attention to detail right there. Um, but I think 
overall, it's it's decent. I prefer Sidewinder. And because of that, I've just realized that I've ranked it higher than Sidewinder. So I'm going to put it uh, there. Blackout from Halo 3, the remake of Lockout. Uh, no, sorry. Um, it's got some cool HLG spots on it. But again, I can't rank maps by HLG spots. This was not a good remake of Lockout at all. I appreciate the aesthetic. And there are some very, very iconic screenshots that came from this map. Um, but... I don't know, it just didn't feel the same as Lockout. Funnily enough, right, this might be like a turbo smooth brain moment for me, but I didn't know this was a remake of Lockout until MCC. I only realized it in MCC. Back in the day, I had no idea. I thought it was just a, a different map. Um, I just, I never enjoyed it as much as Lockout. It doesn't play the same, the setups are different. Just not a fan. Citadel, this is gonna go in B tier as well, at the top of B tier. Citadel aesthetically was absolutely gorgeous and i mean come on it's in the same tower as epitaph which is the tower that essentially acts as mendicant bias's headstone his tombstone that this tower is mendicant bias's tombstone that's sick um but the layout is very very simple it's just geometry taken from the campaign which i'm fine with personally but it was a very simple arena map it was good i liked it i enjoyed it i haven't really got any bad things to say about it, but at the same time, I've not really got many amazing things to say about it. Cold Storage, the remake of Chill Out from Halo 1. I'm going to put it in, honestly, higher than Chill Out. I prefer Cold Storage Chill Out. I'm going to put it quite high in A tier, actually. You know what? Top of A tier. I really, really enjoyed Cold Storage back in the day. Really cool aesthetic. Played quite differently, I'd say, but that's mostly because of Halo 3's gameplay being very different to Halo 1's. A lot more fast-paced and snappy and, and twitchy. Um, but yeah, I think overall it was a good remake of, of, of Chill Out from Halo 1. I have many fond memories of playing, for some reason, Fiesta Double XP Weekends on this map. It was always my favorite Fiesta map. So yeah, top of A tier. Ooh, Construct. S plus tier. On par with Hang'em High. I think Construct is another one of those maps, like Waterworks, like Terminal, that I can't believe has never been remade. Again, fingers crossed for a remake of it in Infinite. I would say Construct is the single best King of the Hill map in Halo history. The verticality of it is incredible. Again, much like Prisoner, like I was saying before, it's got great verticality that is good to control, but there are so many great ways for you to ascend the map. It's not like there's just one way up. Take one or one of three grav lifts, you can take the ramps, you can take the ramps that go up to the sword, the sneaky ramps. There are so many different ways to get to the top of this map and control it, and then also break someone else's control of it, which makes it unique. I am a big, big fan of Construct, and it needs a remake. Edge from Halo Online. Uh, C tier, I guess. Uh, I've not really played Edge much, to be honest with you. I, no, you know what? Thinking about it, I think I've played Edge more in Halo Online than I have in Halo 3 MCC. Uh, it's okay. I always thought it was a bit too open. The outside sections were a bit too open, and that bridge in the middle... To be fair, that's kind of meant to be open because it's where I think rockets spawn, which is fair enough. But the outside sections, like the, the library section and then the cliffside section, were just always so open for me. They didn't really feel that fleshed out. I felt like those areas should have been redesigned. Epitaph. Epitaph is going in S tier for me. Honestly, at the top, I always loved Epitaph's design. I was surprised when people said they didn't really enjoy it. I loved it for Team Doubles, Team Slayer, for Free For All, for Infection. I always thought it was a great layout, very, very cool, mostly asymmetrical layout with, again, good verticality. Of course, it's got in the middle of the map, the really cool kind of midship styled gravity effect uh, pad that the rockets spawn on, that if you have enough firepower, you can actually blow out of where it is and have it fly around the map. But then of course, the piece de la resistance is the offensive bias guardian hologram at the top of the map, staring down over it, given that this is right at the apex of Mendicant Bias's tombstone, the tower that is a tombstone. Hearing the, the monks chanting in the background just is such a damn good atmosphere for this map. Amazing layout for me personally, even better atmosphere. Foundry from Halo 3. I'm going to put this in B tier. I'm talking about the default layout of Foundry. Uh, I actually kind of enjoy it, to be honest with you, um, especially sniping on it. I always like sniping on it because the grav lift that spawns in near the snipers can be used to get into some really cool spots like at the top of the map on like little ledges that you're not really meant to get on. I'd say honestly, overall, really good, like mostly slayer map for like team snipers, SWAT, doubles, etc. Ghost Town. Ghost Town is going to go again at the top of B tier. Um, it's not amazing, but for me, it holds a special place in my heart because it's the first map that I ever got an overkill on. My Halo 3 overkill achievement, and 
subsequently, my commando helmet was unlocked on a shotty snipers on Ghost Town in like May 2008, and I was over the goddamn moon. Holds a special place in my heart for that alone. I think it's a decently cool layout. Again, nothing super unique, um, or I guess it kind of is unique, but nothing that really stands out for me personally. I wouldn't say that I loved it, but I, I do enjoy it. I always remember really enjoying, in fact, Living Dead on it. I always thought Infection was pretty damn good in it, but overall, decent map. Guardian, S plus tier, just below midship. Um, I would say Guardian is the best Halo 3 map. It's a spiritual successor to Lockout, so it's not a remake of Lockout, but it's also not a completely original map. It's like got Lockout's DNA running through it, and again, it's another one of those maps that I cannot believe has never been remade. There's a guy called Unique who's remade a fantastic version of it in Halo Infinite's Forge that looks beautiful, and I really hope to see that in matchmaking when Forge comes out. It has all the positive traits of Lockout from Halo 2 and technically H2A as well. Very cool aesthetic in the Guardian Forest that sadly we never saw in a campaign. Many cool ways to traverse it, loads of really cool skill jumps. Beautiful map. Heretic from Halo 3. Um, I mean, I've got to, I'll put it below uh, Guardian because I actually remember enjoying it not as much as Midship in Halo 2, but I still really enjoyed it. Really, really good remake. It's basically a one-to-one -one remake of Midship from Halo 2, so it's got to go in S plus tier. Played fantastically in Halo 3 as well. Um, I remember in Halo 3, holding P3 was even stronger than Halo 2, which is probably why I've ranked it a little bit lower because it was a little bit too overpowered of a power position. But overall, again, just, it's, it's midship. It's a beautiful map. Oh, look, another S plus tier map. High ground. High ground is going to go, I'd say, above Heretic. Such a damn good one-sided objective mode map. So damn good. It's great for, like, Team Slayer and stuff as well, and, and Infection, don't get me wrong, but this map shines in one-sided objective modes, where the defenders have to hold off inside the base at the back of the map that I'm assuming was also meant to be, like, a World War II-esque base, like Crow's Nest was meant to be. And then the attackers have to start on the beach, like, D-Day style, and make their way up it, infiltrate the base through either, like, going, going like, through the crack in the wall, through the tunnel, or by grav lifting into the tower where the spot and laser is, or by infiltrating the base and opening the gate so the teammates can come in, or through the bunker. Just so many ways to assault it. Such a fantastic map, and I'm gonna say it again like I've said so many times in this video. Why has this never been remade? Why has Construct, High Ground, Death Island, Terminal, Waterworks, why have they never been remade? I don't understand. Speaking of a map that deserved a remake, we have Turf from Halo 3 technically. Halo Online, but technically Halo 3. Uh, where did I put Turf originally? I'm going to put it next to the original turf, just a little bit below it. I prefer Halo 2 turf, but the remake of, I think it's called Icebox, the remake of turf in Halo 3 and Halo Online, I thought was also really, really good. Very cool aesthetic, a snowy, futuristic new Mombasa, I think it was meant to be. Plays exactly the same as original turf, to be honest with you, but I still love it. Isolation. Isolation is going to go in B tier. I would say in between Citadel and Assembly. Isolation, I don't dislike as, as much as other people, but... It's not that great. It's good. It's not amazing. I think it shines in team doubles, to be honest with you, uh, but it's got quite a lot of power weapons on it. And this is one of those maps back in the day, actually, alongside high ground, where the ghost was actually a power weapon that you wanted to control. Um, that's not so much a thing anymore, but back in the day, it was. And that was where I remember having the most fun on isolation. Also, very cool little detail. If you sit on isolation for ages and just AFK in a custom game, the map becomes slowly more consumed by flood as time goes on. Very cool little bit of attention to detail right there. Last Resort, ah, I don't really like it that much in Halo 3. I'm going to go bottom of B tier. It's not bad by any means. It's a remake of Xanazabar, but I just don't enjoy it anywhere near as much as I used to enjoy Xanazabar. I think mostly it's how poor Halo 3's BR is at range compared to Halo 2's that makes me dislike it more because a lot of the sight lines on Last Resort slash Xanazabar are quite long sight lines. So they always feel a little bit less enjoyable in Halo 3. In fact, you know, you know what? I'm, I'm going to bump it up. Top of B tier, actually. I do have some fun memories on it. In particular, Mongoose launching. That's always really fun. It's it's a great map. It's fantastic. It's just, personally, I enjoy Zanzibar a lot more than Last Resort. Longshore from Halo 3's Mythic DLC, I believe. Uh, B tier again. Um, about there, I'd say. I, I, it's, Longshore's decent. Uh, it's a good, like, bigger, like, 6v6 slash BTB map for infantry, I think. Uh, very cool as well that it gave us the speedboat that I used to spend ages in the day, back in the day, trying to drive or trying to sit on, and it never worked out. Narrows, yet another S plus tier Halo 3 map going, I would say, where is it going to go? Just a bit below s the high ground, I'd say. 
another absolutely beautiful, incredible 4v4 arena map that, again, has never been remade for some peculiar reason. I don't understand why. If anyone from 4 3 out there is watching this video, please remake Narrows in Infinite, I'm begging you. The man cannons are such a cool mechanic on this map that people have hit some disgusting shots on in the past. And they're used to make the map such a unique layout for something like CTF, but at the same time, it's also fantastic for Team Slayer as well. Controlling top middle of the bridge is honestly so powerful, but at the same time, so hard to keep. It's so easy to gain control of the bridge and like look down into the enemy bases, into the lobbies, but it's also so, so easy to lose it as well because there are so many ways you can be flanked. The enemy can go over the man cannon and go behind you. They can come up beneath you, they can push over you, there are so many ways to do it. Another fantastic 4v4 map. Orbital, this is another B tier map I'd say, um, I don't know, about there I'd say. I don't dislike Orbital, but at the same time, I don't really love it. It's it's okay, unique layout, quite tunnel based. Um, it's also where the last cutscene of ODST is based, uh, but yeah, it's decent. Not really much to say about it to be honest with you. Rat's Nest, I've never liked Rat's Nest. Top of C tier, I've never really liked it. Um, I always thought it was a very simple layout for a BTB map. It's, I don't think it's bad, but I just don't particularly like love it at all. I really like it that much. Sandbox, the default layout, I think, again, is B tier, really. Um, I actually kind of do like the default forge map variant of Sandbox, to be honest with you. I think it's pretty fun. Having the overshield and like a pedestal in the middle of the map is a pretty cool idea. And then the sand dunes around the outside of the map where you can take the chop around and flank or take a sniper up and snipe down at the enemy base is pretty cool. Uh, but overall it is meant to be just like a taste of what you can do on the sandbox version of sandbox. Sand Trap, another S plus tier Halo 3 map. That is going to go uh, underneath Narrows I'd say. Sand Trap is such, such a damn good BTB map. I mean, the elephants alone make this map S plus tier. They seem kind of silly and useless at a first glance, but when you play objective modes where the flag spawn is on the elephant and you realize that you've got a mobile base, that makes for such cool combat. It's one of those maps that's just perfect for every kind of combat. Heavy vehicles like Scorpions and Wraiths are great on it, Air vehicles, Banshees and Hornet are great on it. Light vehicles like the Warthog and the, the Ghost are fantastic on it as well. Infantry is great on it. It's just, it's fantastic for everything. And on top of all of that as well, it's got a really cool aesthetic. And of course, the mystery of Sand Trap is still there as well with the weird runes and stuff on the walls, which were actually referenced in Halo Infinite, which is very, very cool. And I also loved as well how the map doesn't have like a forced boundary to it. There's not like a wall. It's like, oh, you can't walk past here or no like return to the battlefield boring bullshit that you see in games nowadays. No, 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 no. Instead, you walk out the map and mines start coming out the ground that you have to dodge, that you can dodge, mind you, if you're fast enough, which is so cool. That's just such a more interesting way of having a map boundary as opposed to return to battlefield or just a solid wall or, God forbid, an invisible barrier. Snowbound. This is going to shock some people. I actually really like Snowbound, believe it or not. Very cool aesthetic, very mysterious aesthetic in the middle of nowhere on some moon or something that I, I like. But I actually used to really enjoy Snowbound back in the day. It was another one of those maps where when I first like started seeing people's reactions to maps, when I saw everyone hating it, I was like, wait, what? Why? I don't understand. This was like back in the day, probably my favorite like lone wolf. I, I used to play lone wolf back in the day quite a lot in Halo 3 and it was my favorite lone wolf map. Definitely. Easily. Great bit of vehicle play with the ghost being like a semi power weapon intertwined with lots of sniping gameplay and then close quarters gameplay down below. I thought Snowbound was pretty good. Oh god, standoff. No, no, no. First D tier map. I don't like this map at all. This map's only gift to the world was Jenga. It gave us Jenga, which is fantastic, but the regular map, I just don't enjoy it at all. Not in the slightest. It needs snipers. Each base needs to have at least one sniper to make it fun. I just... I, just, I can't put into words how much I dislike standoff. And for, for, for some reason, for me, literally ever since MCC came out, it's, I've always felt like it's weighted way too high in BTB and even in 4v4 as well in Halo 3. Like, I always find myself playing this map way too much in MCC and it just puts me off playing. The Pit is again going into S plus tier. I prefer the Pit to Narrows and High Ground, but not Guardian. I'd say, yeah, fifth in S plus tier. I think the pit is a fantastic symmetrical 4v4 map that is amazing for notably CTF and Slayer. Each kind of lane of the map is totally different to the rest. Something I think a lot of modern three lane maps fall for is making most of the lanes just kind of play the same. 
Whereas the pit absolutely didn't. Like you had the you had Rocket Hall that was really tight and claustrophobic. You had Green Hall where camera spawned that you could ricochet nades off the wall and was quite hectic, but not as hectic as, as Rocket Pit. And then you also had Sword that you had to be really careful in because people could either sit on top of like the TVs and shoot you through the gap in the roof or they'd be crouching around the corner with a sword. And then of course there's the underpass as well with the overshield and under the bridge. There are so many ways to push to the enemy side of the map on the, in the pit. I think it plays so well in competitive and also casual as well. Another one of those maps that is absolutely incredible for competitive and absolutely incredible for casual as well. One of my favorite things in Halo full stop is racing at the start of a pit game to get the sniper and try and counter snipe the enemy sniper in their, sni in their S1. I love that so much. Such a damn good map. Oh look, another S plus tier map, Valhalla. I don't like Valhalla as much as Sandtrap, but I still absolutely love Valhalla. I mean, Valhalla, I think, is a natural evolution of Blood Gulch, and I, as you can see, definitely prefer it to Blood Gulch. Great for heavy vehicles, light vehicles, air vehicles, infantry. Some of my fondest memories are lasering banshees out the sky on Valhalla. Is it a bit cheese? Yes. Do I care? Not in the slightest. Or of course, sniping enemies out of their man cannon as they go through it and seeing the bodies ragdoll through the air. And then uh, something I've got to just mention, right? The stream on Valhalla, the physics of it, how it looks is just so good. I used to spend so long before I had Xbox Live in 2007, killing myself in customs and watching my Spartan's body or Elite's body just float down the river into the ocean. Just float. I just, I used to love how the physics work with the water and also how good the water looked in 2007 and to be quite honest with you still looks now the water on valhalla still looks incredible speaking of waterfalls our last map for halo 3 is waterfall which is one of the cut halo online maps i think waterfall's decent um i think honestly it stands with a lot of the halo 3 maps i'd say b tier yeah a bit below backwash i think waterfall is pretty good um not amazing by any means uh but yeah i to be honest i don't really have much to say about waterfall because i've not played it loads but Whenever, whenever I have played it, I've thought it was decent. Right then, on to Halo Reach. We have Anchor 9. Um, eh, alright. It's okay. Uh, it's pretty good for infection. Other than that, eh, it's decent. Um, I like the, out, the outer space sections with low gravity. Uh, having to go around the back of that like glass pane to get rockets always led to people like sprinting off and jumping into space and just being stuck floating out into space trying to get to the rockets, which I liked. Uh, but the inside section is nothing special. It's the outside section that I think puts it into B tier. If it didn't have a zero grav section, this would definitely be a C tier map. Oh god, what, whatever the whatever the name of the Battle Canyon remake was in, in Reach, I didn't like this as much because it had those rooms at the back that people used to camp in so bad. They moved the teleporters into a separate room behind the base in the cliffside. I didn't like that as much, so I'm going to put whatever this bloody map's called in C tier uh, at the top. It was still fun to play um, and it was a pretty like aesthetically pleasing remake of the map, but I just didn't think it was anywhere near as good as the original. Boardwalk. I used to enjoy Boardwalk, quite honestly. A tier. Um, above boarding action. Yeah, I'd say above Avery Tower as well. I used to like Boardwalk quite a lot. It was a good infection map. It was a good Team Slayer map. It was a good objective map overall. I always remember really enjoying sniping on Boardwalk. Um, and there were also loads of really good HLG spots on it as well, which I can't put into the rankings, but I thought I'd mention anyway. Boneyard. Boneyard is going to go into B tier right at the top. Boneyard for me is probably the weakest invasion map, but I still like it. I had the most fun on it in the beta, quite honestly, because, I mean, it was the only invasion map, right? But I played the shit out of the Reach beta. I played, God, I played that so much, and I have so many fond memories on Boneyard Invasion from the beta. Just being amazed that I was playing a multiplayer game, and there was a phantom there, and a longsword came over and bombed that phantom. I remember thinking, like, what the hell? Like... This is what Halo is meant to be, and to be honest, I still really like it in a, in release reach, but not as much as I did in the beta. Whatever the headlong remake was called, I can't remember what it was called, whatever it was called that was released in reach as a part of, for some reason, Halo 1 anniversary, they remade a Halo 2 map, um, Breakneck I think it was. Honestly, I remember really enjoying this, I'm gonna put it in A tier again, uh, around this a bit higher than boardwalk it's i mean it's headlong right it's a great great map um and i think it played in reach pretty much identical to how it played in halo 2 i just prefer the aesthetic in halo 2 quite a lot more um if i know you know what no nah, that's a bit harsh i'm gonna bump it up to s tier uh 
S tier, about there. I, so I love Headlong a lot, and I really did enjoy it in Reach. Having the superintendent on the billboard is really cool, and also the burning seventh column statue looking out into the distance was quite uh, melancholic, I'd say. But yeah, I, I did enjoy that map. Another break map, we have Breakpoint, which was the first DLC uh, invasion map, the only other dev-made invasion map that we got after launch. I thought this was a pretty good one. I'd say A tier around there. Um, this is a honestly really good, really good invasion map to be honest with you. Um, not as good as Aspire, as you'll see in a minute, but still really good. I like the fact that the Covenant assaulted with a bomb on this and we got to see what the Covenant bomb looked like uh, and actually fighting inside like Oni facilities. And when you, in particular, when you played as the Covenant, taking a bomb into an Oni facility, I always thought was a pretty cool kind of like theming for it. This map has so many great moments of the Falcon as well. Strafe runs over the bridge with the Falcon or taking a scorpion through the tunnel to intercept the Covenant Wraith was always really cool. Yeah, I remember enjoying this map quite a lot. Condemned from Reach. Uh, honestly, you know what? Bottom of A tier, because that zero gravity section in the center was really, really cool. And also, so was looking out the window and seeing a Reach getting glassed. Very cool aesthetic for a map. Um, but the zero grav section in the center is normally, like, pretty carnage. Countdown. I love, love Countdown. Uh... Bottom of S plus tier. I was debating between putting it top of S tier or bottom of S plus, but it's going to go S plus. I really like Countdown. Uh, mostly, I, I liked it for Infection, but mostly for competitive and MLG. I thought this was a really, really good competitive map for both Team Slayer and also Five Flag as well. Um, it was a bit like Midship in that there were so many ways to run a flag on Countdown. You could take it round up through the, the like back alley outside. You could lift up and take it over the bridge. You could take it round Big Door or my favorite way of running it was throwing it out of window uh, onto like bottom mid and then having a teammate pick it up and throw it into your window and have somebody else catch it and run it in. I always really liked that. Overall, a great competitive map notably with really good verticality, but again, many ways to assault that verticality. Forge World, this has to go in S plus tier, right? Like I'll put it bottom of S plus tier, but I mean, it has to be S plus tier. Forge World was mind-blowing at the uh, back in the day Ab when that first um i forget what it's called that first viaduct release that debuted it i was like okay like what they're showing is like one little like arena and they were like yeah you can go over there and 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 i was like what like no it's, they're like different levels right nope they're not different levels that is still the the biggest halo map of all time and although there's a lot that can be said about the importance of blank canvas forge maps, I also think that having forge canvases that have elements of natural terrain in them as well is equally as important because sometimes you need like a little bit of inspiration when you're forging from the natural world to get you going. And Forge World was just a great example of that. The fact that map was in a 2010 game on the Xbox 360 and is not only its size, but looks as good as it does, still blows my mind to this day. I think quite honestly, for me, that is one of the top three defining traits of Reach. That map is mind-blowing still. High Noon, right. This one was a remake of Hang 'em High, and I thought it was considerably better than Tombstone, but nowhere near as good as Hang 'em High still. So I'll put it bottom of A tier. I think that's that's fair for it. Um, very cool aesthetic, though. It wins on its aesthetic. I mean, I can't really say more about it because it's basically the exact same layout as Hang 'em High, besides like maybe a few little changes here and there. Um, but the, the aesthetic of it was so cool. That, we now know, thanks to Shadows of Reach, is in fact a portal to the Ark on Reach. That portal is to the Ark, and it's the one that Atriox and Esherim and Co. use to get from Reach to the Ark, which is very, very cool. Really cool aesthetic for a map. Having the, the massive like storm beneath the portal as well I thought was great. Uh, not as good as Hang 'em High, but played a lot better in Reach than it did in Halo 2. Highlands. This was meant to be one of the training facilities that the Spartan has trained in on Reach, but... I never thought it was a great BTB map, to be honest with you, C tier. It was very cool looking off in the distance and seeing Reach getting glassed by Covenant Carriers, but the layout for me was like a worse version of Timberland, if that makes any sense. It's very similar in that it's like that kind of alpine environment with lots of trees and streams and like quite close quarters vehicle sections, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed uh, Timberland. That said though, at the same time, the aesthetic of like the training facility was pretty cool. Penance, the remake of Damnation from Halo 1. It wasn't as good as Damnation, but to be honest with you, I'm going to go bottom of A tier. I thought it was a really good remake overall. Um, 
pretty much the exact same as Damnation, really, except it was in Reach. I think it played better in Halo 1. I mean, having jetpacks and stuff on a map like this kind of ruined the verticality aspect of it, but I still enjoyed it. Powerhouse. Powerhouse is a top of B tier map, I'd say. Uh, come on then. There we go. Yeah, top of B tier map. Um, I like it. It's not fantastic, but again, in both the Reach beta and also launch Reach, I have quite a lot of fun memories on Powerhouse in many different game modes, notably, again, like Team Doubles and Infection. I think that, honestly, it's a fantastic, like, casual map. Uh, it's not competitive in the slightest, which is fine. Um, but it has, I guess, a decently unique layout. Having the, like, the, the pit in the middle, uh, where you have to get down to get rockets for that little, that little section at the back. But then you've also got a lot of, like, elevation as well, and, like, very different levels in the buildings too, which is pretty cool. And then the outer section of the map that wasn't really used much in Team Slayer, but was the opposite in Infection. It was, like, the holdout spot in Infection. Quite a varied map as well, I'd say, in its use cases, which I'd say is a dub, but it's not a map that I love, really. Reflection, the remake of Ivory Tower in Halo Reach. Where did I put Ivory Tower? Where the fuck did I put Ivory Tower? Where the... God, there's so many maps, I can't even find it. A tier, if not B tier. There it is, I found it. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it a slight little bit beneath Ivory Tower, because I preferred Ivory Tower a little bit more. But again, this played basically the same as Ivory Tower. The jetpacks ruin it, like with many things in Reach. Jetpack ruined a lot in Reach. Um, but overall, despite that, I still enjoyed it quite a lot. Ridgeline, the remake of Timberland in Reach. Uh, I preferred Timberland a good amount more, so I'm going to put this lower down B tier. But I did still enjoy uh, Ridgeline, to be honest with you, the little that I played it. Notably because of its aesthetic. If you look out in the, into the vista beyond, the foreign spires look so, so sick. Solitary. This is going to go... Oh, I don't enjoy it gameplay wise as much as Prisoner. So it's not, it's definitely not going S tier. I'm going to say, mm, yeah, bottom of A tier. Um, the layout, again, is pretty much the same as Prisoner. Uh, besides now, there's another ramp to get to the sniper tower, which I'm okay with because the only way up there before was a ladder, which is a bit awkward in Halo. Um, but the main thing for me, the main reason that I love this is the kind of theming of the map. The fact that it's like an ancient foreigner prison that was used to hold like some of the most high value prisoners, the most like dangerous prisoners in the entire Ecumene. But that something's broke, that, that prisoner has broken out of the facility is so cool. Like, if you look out the windows, you can see how isolated these spires are. There's so many of them in this, like, real snowy tundra, all isolated from one, from one another. And it just gets the mind going, thinking about what that prisoner may have been. Very, very cool. Ah, the spire. This is so predictable. It's got to go in S plus tier. Um, I prefer it to Valhalla, to be honest with you, and Sand Trap, actually. There. Um, this is the... The, the invasion map, easily. Like, yeah, Breakpoint or whatever it's called and, and Boneyard are good, but the Spire is so, so good. This is the one, the one invasion map that really simulated like a human versus Covenant warfare scenario. I mean, the, the first section is, I'll be honest, a bit boring, but the Spire itself, like flanking the Spire in a Falcon and having all the Spartans rush up the grab lift to throw the core out and then seeing all those Spartans throw themselves off the top of the Spire to try and land in the grab lift and seeing half of them miss was so sick. This was assaulting the Spire is honestly, like, I know modern Halo games and everything always talk about like, oh, we want to immerse our players. I've never felt more immersed in a Halo game than I have rushing the Spire as a Spartan or playing as an elite zealot and guarding the top of the Spire with, with a sword and assassinating all the Spartans that come up the lift. What a fantastic map to show off invasion. What a map. <laughs> and on the flip side, um, bottom of C tier for sword base. I don't like it. Like, you basically have to use a jetpack on this map. It, it takes far too long to get to the top of the map via like any other armor ability. So you essentially forced to use jetpack. That, that's why I didn't like jetpack in Reach. Like so many of the maps felt like they were designed with it in mind. And it just, if you play it with like any other like um, armor ability or whatever, it just doesn't play anywhere near as well. I do have some fond memories on it on like infection and stuff. I think it was a, overall like a pretty good infection map, I'd say. But uh, it's okay for Team Slayer. It's just... The verticality is not easily traversable. Like, you look at a map, for example, like, I don't know, Lockout that's quite vertical, or Countdown that's really vertical, another one in Reach, and there are so many ways without jetpack to get to the top of it, but Sword Base is so restrictive. Tempest, this is one of the first DLC maps for Reach. Tempest was, it was good. Cool, cool setting, I guess. Cool for in a facility on a beach, pretty cool, with a crash longsword, pretty cool. Decent layout, nothing too special. 
Zealot. Now, Zealot, I would say, is a bottom of S tier map. Zealot, I like a lot for both casual and competitive. I used to love it in the MLG playlist back in the day. But then also, I loved it in casual because in the MLG playlist, um, we, we cut off the zero gravity section because it was a bit cheese and it made like running flags too easy. But when you go and play it in casual, having that option there was really cool. Having the zero gravity section above the map that you could like get the concussion rifle from and then float down to the map was pretty cool. It was a cool way of flanking, not very competitively balanced, but that's fine for casual, right? That's perfectly okay for casual. That I, I thought it, it played really well in both. Wasn't a, an S plus tier map, I don't think, but I'd say comfortably an S tier map. I have quite a few fond memories on Zealot. Right then, moving on to Halo 4, we have Abandon. Uh, Abandon was all right. Mm, B tier, I'd say, about there. It was all right. Good degree of verticality on it that was decently accessible from both sides. Uh, it was a decent competitive map overall. I don't really have much to say about Abandon, to be honest with you. I guess the purple forest looked quite cool. The layout was decent. The forest was a bit too claustrophobic and the tower I thought in the middle was a bit too small and like enclosed. There weren't many ways to fight in it. A drift from Halo 4 as well. Um, B tier a bit lower. I like the Mega Mantis. I think the Mega Mantis is pretty cool. Um, if I'm going to move it lower than that, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, about there. The Mega Mantis is pretty cool in the middle, but I find a lot of the hallways way too claustrophobic. The Gravelists from the outside are a decent way to traverse the map, but they always end up being like way too easy to predict, I find. Um, so yeah, it's okay. Complex. No, 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 no. I remember hating this map back in the day and I still don't really enjoy it. It never comes up in MCC and to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not too upset about that because... God, back in the day when Halo 4 first came out and the DMR was like disgustingly broken, people used to sit on top of the main building with DMR, jetpack, sleight of hand and bolt shot and you just couldn't kill them. Like there was no killing them at all. It was miserable. The amount of games that I used to just audibly sigh back in the day when I got complex, it's every game. It, oh, just, I don't like complex. Daybreak, uh, I barely played this. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of B tier. I remember having a very cool aesthetic, a very, rather very cool color palette, but I didn't really play it much, so I don't really have much of an opinion on it. Um, the few times that I have played it, I've liked the caves in it, uh, but it's nothing too great. It's quite a small and contained BTV map. Exile, I don't like this map anywhere near as much as other people seem to. Uh, B tier, bottom of B tier. Not bad by any means, but also, I don't know. It's okay. Um, I thought it was way too claustrophobic for vehicles. Um, and you couple how tight the vehicle areas were with the fact that you could spawn with a plasma pistol and plasma grenades in Halo 4 and vehicles were just rendered like null on it. Completely null. Um, I did though, I did like the, the various bases throughout the map and the kind of how, how a lot of the infantry sections were like embedded into walls. Like you had a few bases embedded into a cave or in the central cave system or in like the little UNSC base at the back side of the map or the, under the bridges and stuff like that. That was cool, but vehicles in this map were like borderline unusable. Harvest from Halo 4. This is all right again. I'd say stop, top of C tier. Very cool to get a map set on Harvest um, and it looked cool, but I remember feeling way too big. Uh, but you know what? I don't, now that I'm thinking about it, I actually don't mind that because I, I, I would rather a map feel too big than too small personally. So I don't mind that, but its layout was like very, very three lean, like just bang, bang, bang with a few little intersections in between. Nothing too fantastic. Haven. Um, Haven was definitely the best map in Halo 4. I would say Haven's A tier. I can't rank it higher than Damnation. Eh, there, yeah. Haven was good. Um, not amazing, but it was definitely the best arena map and best overall map that Halo 4 had to offer, I'd say. I did enjoy Haven. It was a good map for competitive. It was a good map for social. It had a few cool like jumps and routes you could take. A f very few, but the ones that were there were kind of cool, I guess. Um, had some man cannons as well, which I appreciate, but it was decent. Impact. Now, I've not included many four traps in this, but Impact is one of the ones that I have included because I actually remember liking Impact quite a lot. Impact is going to go B tier, beneath Ghost Town, there, above Assembly. Um, yeah, not much to say about it, to be honest with you, but I do remember liking Impact. Uh, in particular, sniping on it for some reason. Uh, it was like a massive ring shape, I believe, with a ring in the middle. I hope I'm thinking of the right map. If not, then you won't see this section in the video, but 
If you're watching this right now, then it is the right map. Landfall. This is one of the maps in that one map pack that were just three absolute bangers. Landfall is going to go at the bottom of A tier. This is my least favorite map in that map pack, but I still really liked it. Um, quite urban environment, actually. Quite close quarters, uh, 4v4 map, but you could kind of play 5v5 on it as well. Some good long sight lines, and then also some good really close quarters areas as well for like shotgun fights that I liked. Played well in Team Slayer mostly. Longbow. Um, Longbow was all right. Longbow was mid B tier map, I'd say. It was all right. Um, decent BTB map. Uh, it was really good for Dominion, actually. Really good for Dominion. Dominion was so good. Christ, we need to bring that back. But yeah, it was a great, great map for Dominion. Everything else is kind of mid, but I always remember locking down that base on the hill at the top and, and building the turrets on it and just watching the turrets shred people. That was always pretty good. Um, so yeah, decent BTB map overall. Meltdown. This is another map where I liked how it looked, notably because it was like a snowy tundra map. But at the same time, uh, because of how close quarters a lot of the areas were, vehicles were kind of rendered null on it. Um, so I'm going to put it at the bottom of B tier. Uh... There are a few like, little icy caverns that were good for infantry fights, but it's a BTV map and 99% of BTV maps in me should be good for vehicles and this wasn't. Monolith, which was another one of the maps in that really good map pack. It's going to go above Landfall. Monolith looked really cool and also I thought played pretty well as well. Not great for competitive, but a great kind of casual like social arena map where you could just like mindlessly slay on it, get like a damage boost saw and just tear through people. I enjoyed it. Had some good verticality and a massive reliance on grav lifts as well, which I thought was pretty cool. I always enjoyed grav lifting over the middle and throwing grenades into that section in the middle where the hill was. I used to get so many kills doing that back in the day. Outcast. This is another one of those BTB maps that I barely played. Um, I'll put it there. I think I've played Outcast about four times. I know it's set from that section in a New Blood where Rookie dies, that planet Talitza. I think it's set on Talitza, which I guess is decent. Um, but I, I don't really know much about it. It was all right. That's all I remember. I remember thinking it was okay. Good for vehicles mostly, but okay. Perdition. This one I thought was cool aesthetically. Uh, so I'm going to put it above Longbow, uh, but yeah, above Ankenine as well, because I prefer to Ankenine. Um, yeah, Perdition I thought was pretty good uh, aesthetically. It was set on, I think it was New Carthage, uh, but it was a reactor, like a nuclear reactor site that was going into Meltdown, which was really cool, and there was a really fast tram going over there overhead that reminded me of Halo 2. I, I do like that, actually. In fact, I might bump it up, because I thought the gameplay was pretty good as well. It was quite an open map, um, but there were loads of like interior sections you could fight in as well. It was great for light vehicles and like mid vehicles like the Warthog as well, which yeah, you know what? Where is it? Let's bump it up a little bit. Let's bump it up to above Relic and Remnant uh, and above a Oh, definitely above Abandon. Yeah, about there. I, I did kind of like it. Pitfall, the remake of the pit. Um, I'm going to be really generous and say bottom of A tier. Uh, I don't really like it that much. The color palette on it was just too grim. Um, and I didn't like that man... No, you know what? It's going down. Um, I didn't like that man cannon that went from underneath sword into sword room. I get their idea of wanting to make sword room more accessible, but I thought it was fine how it was in Halo 3. It didn't need that extra like lift going up. Other than that, the map is pretty much the same as far as I can remember, but I just think the pit is so much better. Ragnarok, the remake of Valhalla. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'd put Ragnarok in A tier. Uh, a bit beneath Haven. Uh, it played mm, kind of similar to, to Valhalla, but because of the DMR and the light rifle, but notably the DMR, which is a weapon that you'll find that in my weapon tier list video, but I really don't like the DMR. I never have done. Um, the DMR, I just it kind of made it too easy to fight at long range. Having a hit scan DMR just made firefights last way too long range but besides that it was a decent remake of valhalla ravine uh this was okay i remember playing this a few times c tier uh, better than tombstone but not better than warlock um yeah i remember playing it a few times uh it was okay it was decent for like ctf in fact i remember getting quite a few commendations on it for some reason i think it had a gorse hog as well there was like a sniper ridge that looked down like a middle like dip section that was decent um, but it was meant to be like a forge map to show what you could do on the ravine canvas. It was all right. Shatter. Uh, Shatter again was an okay BTB map. I'd say bottom of B tier. It was more open, so like the mantis and stuff didn't get insta killed on it, which was decent. Uh, and the aesthetic being like really green, like, like green like crystal cave or something was quite cool. Uh, but I don't have many fond memories of it. I played it a few times. Thought it was decent, um, but that was about it. Skyline. This is on par with Haven. I'm going to put it slightly above Haven as 
the tied best map in Halo 4. It was the other map in that DLC that came out with three bangers. Um, it was the best one in that DLC. Uh, I think it was set on Tribute. It was like a New Mombasa-esque level, uh, but it had the Hornet on it. Like I think it was like a police Hornet or something that was scanning this uh, work in progress kind of building. It was really cool. But overall, it was a great competitive map and also a great casual map as well. Some great sight lines, some tight areas, some more open areas for like BR skirmishes, some very claustrophobic bases that were good for CTF. Um, there's another map that had loads of like great, great CTF run routes as well, which is always a bonus. Solace. I thought Solace was decent, actually. Solace can go in eight here. Um... Above Landfall and below Monolith. I always kind of liked Solace. If I remember rightly, Solace was the first Halo 4 map that I ever played before the game came out. I played it at like a gaming convention. Um, and I think it was the first map I ever played. I think I played Flood on Solace. And so it's got like a little bit of like a positive like mem memory for me in that sense. And I still like it, honestly. The the sniper duels at the start are pretty good. The under section with the massive grav lift is pretty cool. And it's got a pretty good aesthetic as well. Cool color palette, cool aesthetic. And overall, decent map layout wise. Vertigo. This is that one map with the EMP thing on it that was a DLC map. Um, bottom of B tier. I barely played this map because it came out with Pitfall. And at that point, I, I was checked out of Halo 4. I was, I was done. Um... I, I've played it more in MCC, and I, I kind of like it in MCC. Uh, the EMP thing isn't as effective as you'd think it would be, to be honest with you. It's kind of reliant on people camping in that tower at the back of the map, and people don't tend to do that, at least in MCC. But I will say that the kind of vista in the back in the ocean is really cool with the tornadoes and the lightning and stuff like that. It's a visually really cool looking map, but layout wise, it's, yeah, it's okay. Vortex. This is one map that I always remember really liking. Vortex I'm going to put in A tier above Monolith. This is a BTB map that I really enjoyed in Halo 4. Honestly, it's, I think, the best BTB map in Halo 4. Besides Ragnarok, because that's Valhalla, which I guess is kind of cheesing it, right? But yeah, I always remember liking Vortex, and the setting of it was pretty cool as well. Like a, a foreigner wind harnessing facility. It looked pretty cool. Um, seeing the, the like real inclement weather off in the distance was sick. And I always enjoyed the fights that went off in that really big kind of semi-open facility in the middle of the map that had various ways of getting into it. There was a man cannon, there was a grav lift, there was uh, like ramps that got into it. Overall, pretty good map, I'd say overall. I, I, you know what? To be honest with you, there are definitely maps that I'd rather get remakes than Vortex, but if Vortex ever did get a remake, I wouldn't be mad. I'd actually quite like it. Wreckage. Uh, the layout of this is definitely a bottom of B tier layout, but it's going to go up a little bit because of how cool it is. It's set on one of the Maginot Line installations from the Forerunner Flood War, um, which were used to defend Forerunner Space from the Flood, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. And seeing the like the Line installation weapons in the ocean behind you firing is, is very, very cool. Layout-wise, it's got some massive man cannons that I remember enjoying when it first came out. But other than that, it's, uh, it's okay. It's, it's all right. Some decent sections for ghosts overall, but that's kind of it. And that was the last map in Halo 4, which means we're on to Halo 5. Starting off with uh, Apex 7, I think this one was called, which is a Warzone one. Um, eh, bottom B tier. I remember them saying before launch, like, yeah, we've got a Warzone map that's inspired by this. Or that's, that's, I think they actually said, I read like an interview or something that said it's based on the Silent Cartographer. So I was like, oh shit, we're going to get like a Silent Cartographer, like Death Island style map. That's sick. And then I played it and I was like, hang on. It's just a beach. Like, that's the only redeeming aspect of it. It's just a, that's... That's the only aspect of it that re reminds me of Silent Cartographer. Nothing else does. Um, I guess going inland did a little bit, but mostly it didn't really. Um, I didn't really like Warzone overall. I enjoyed it the first few months, but it kind of paled for me rather quickly. So I don't really have many fond memories of the Warzone maps. And I thought Apex 7 was okay, maybe? Um, not my favorite Warzone map. Uh, Assaulting the Beam Tower in the middle was decent, I guess. But I don't know. It was all right. Uh, what is this called? Attack on Sanctum. I don't remember what it's called, uh, but I remember playing it a decent amount. It was one of the last uh, Warzone maps to come out. It was one set on St. Helios that did look pretty good. And from what I remember, actually, it played pretty well as well. So Sanctum, I'll put in B tier, below, above Timberland, I'd say. Um, yeah, this is the one that, in Warzone that you fought Jilam Dharma on. We've, they actually gave us a Jilam Dharma fight, but it was in Warzone. I guess we got to kill him some way, right? Uh, that was that was pretty cool that they did that, honestly. And the layout of the map was pretty good, and the visual aesthetic of it was pretty good as well. Battle of Noctis. This was my favourite Warzone map. Uh, it's gonna go 
above Pitfall. Um, yeah, Noctis I enjoy quite a lot. I thought Noctis is a pretty good uh, Warzone map overall. I love city maps and like Halo 2 notably, so getting one back made me happy. And I think it played pretty well overall. Um, it was There was plenty of room for like Scorpions and Wraith to go around and loads of room for like Warthogs to go into the middle of the map and stuff like that and Ghosts. And then there was loads of good stuff for like the the Wasp and the, the Banshee, which I liked a lot. So yeah, overall, I'd say that was probably the best Warzone map for me. Coliseum. Now, I don't like Halo 5's gameplay, even slightly, but I'm going to give Coliseum credit where it's due. Coliseum, top of A tier, I think. Um, it was a really good competitive map for Halo 5. I can't deny it that. It was a great competitive map. Um, some good sightliners on it, some good verticality, which played into Halo 5's gameplay quite a lot. Uh, some Also some good routes you could take for flags as well. You could take them like down the sniper side, you could take them up the carbine side, you could run them over like top mid and throw them from balcony to balcony. There were some good routes to take the flag on that map and it was definitely a map that excelled in the CTF more so than anything, I'd say. Uh, yeah, it was... I, I can't deny that. Colosseum was a good map. I didn't like Halo 5, but Colosseum was a good map. Uh, March and Stormbreak. I don't know why this is so high in the alphabetical order, but fair enough. Um, this is another Warzone map that I think out of the, the launch Warzone maps was my favorite. So I'm going to put it mid B tier, probably there, I'd say. Uh, scenario map that I enjoyed. Uh, the middle section, like the middle like facility, I always thought was pretty cool. It was quite big and open, quite vertical. But the rest of the map was like, nah, nah, it was all right. Eden. This was the nighttime one. Eden was decent, actually. Um, Eden, I'll put top of B tier. I like the different routes that you could use to scale the vertical parts of the of the level. Loads of little trick jumps and stuff like that. And you know what? This is really specific, but I always remember really liking where I think it was Overshield spawned in the first version of this map on that little pad that was in a really obscure place, but I liked it. I liked that a lot. Um, this is a pretty good Slayer map overall. It worked really well with Halo 5's gameplay, to be honest with you. I, I can't knock it at all. Um, yeah, good map for Halo 5. But Eden, I never liked. Eden, I'll put in C tier. Uh, about there. Um, Eden was the really small version of... Uh, sorry, Empire. Wait. Hang on. Which one is which? This has got to be Empire, right? Yeah, this is Empire. Empire was a small version of Eden um, that was using like five flag CTF that I didn't really enjoy. It was really small. The routes were very simple for it. It was kind of like just straightforward through like a slightly raised bit or around the outside. That was kind of it. Not really a massive fan. Ark, whatever this was called. Was it Raiden Ark? Um, Escape from Ark, that was it. This is the, the initial like debut Warzone map. Uh... Bot, nah, C tier. It's top of C tier, I'll give it up. Oh, there we go, top of C tier. Um, I thought Ark was, it was alright. Ark was decent. Um, I enjoyed it for what it was worth. It wasn't as good as Sanctum or Noctis. They were definitely a lot better than it, but it worked for, for Warzone, I guess. It was a good map to show Warzone off on for the first time because it, it, it looked massive. It had that massive spectacle of having the huge rocket in it that made it look a lot bigger than it actually felt. But there were a lot of areas in that map that were just never used for anything else, like dead areas. And because for some weird reason we couldn't use any of the Warzone maps in customs, we couldn't do anything with those dead areas. We couldn't, we couldn't turn those dead areas into something unique. Like, for example, in Standoff in Halo 3, we turned the dead areas into Jenga. We couldn't do that with uh, with Warzone maps for some reason. Fathom. Fathom was okay. Quite a lot of cool jumps in Fathom. So I'll put it in B tier. I'm like mid B tier. Uh, there were quite a lot of cool jumps in Fathom. I'll give Halo 5 one thing. A lot of the arena maps did have a load of really cool jumps on them, which I appreciate a lot. I love maps with good jumping routes. Yeah, Fathom was decent. Um, out of all the arena maps, it was one of my least favorite, but... It, it worked for Halo 5's gameplay. This is Mercy, the remake of Haven. Uh, aesthetically, it had a really cool aesthetic in like an ancient elite temple that was like hidden from the rest of the planet and it had these massive, like huge, almost like Dark Souls style lanterns that you can move around. Um, but it's just Haven again. So I'm going to put it in A tier uh, around there. In fact, no, you know what? Funny enough, I actually thought Haven played better in Halo 5's gameplay than Halo 4's gameplay. I preferred... I... Th mm, now nah, about they're on they're on par with each other. They're on par. It looked really cool though. Molten. This map was not really it. Uh, yeah, C tier around there. I don't have really anything to say about Molten. The lava looked cool, I guess. Overgrowth. The remix of Plaza. Um, I always mix this map up with the absolutely god tier COD4 map Overgrown. That is 
one of the top five best Call of Duty maps of all time. Sadly, Overgrowth is not one of the top five best Halo maps of all time. Overgrowth is a certified C-tier map. Um, it was okay for Infection, I guess. That's about all I can say about it. Plaza. Now, Plaza, I liked. I thought Plaza was one of Halo 5's better maps. Um, so I'm going to put Plaza A tier alongside Coliseum. I thought Plaza was really good. I think with Halo 5's gameplay, for some reason, I thought that asymmetrical maps were superior to symmetrical maps. And so Plaza, I did like it a lot. Um, loads of really cool jumps on Plaza. Loads of really cool power positions to hold off in. Uh, it was great for, even though I detest strongholds with a burning passion, still do as well. It was good for strongholds. It was great for Oddball. It was great for Team Slayer. Um, quite a few like cool sniping points as well like raised areas that didn't look accessible initially but it turns out actually were with cool jumps to get into them so yeah plaza was pretty good regret regret is my least favorite halo map of all time i hate regret man oh god i don't like that map at all it was a remix of um truth which was a remake of midship or really it was uh, inspired by midship um i don't know it was Regret was not good. I just did I didn't like any of the pathways to get to the top mid on it. Um, I didn't like how you were always fighting on the slopes. Because of Halo 5's completely like botched aiming with heavy aim. It always felt really just awkward and clunky fighting upwards, which is what Regret was based on basically. Um I had a lot more fun with Regret in the beta than I did in the release game. Riptide. Um <laughs> the remix of Fathom. I mean, it had a cool colour palette, but eh, higher than overgrowth, but not great um not really much to say about this to be honest with you it had a cool like easter egg halo combat evolved magnum in the infection variant that's about the only positive thing that i can say alongside the color palette to be honest with you this is skirmish at dark star i didn't like this warzone map um not at all it had the meridian color palette which was already just too like just grim for me i didn't really like it uh, and I also remember it just being way too tight for vehicles again. There are a few okay vehicle areas in it, but mostly it was just a very closed area. Um, the main base, at the like middle section of the map, was very similar to the to Storm Breaks, very similar to it. Um, and the like tight section on the other side of the map where the Warden used to spawn was okay-ish. Hmm, I don't know. Not really a fan. Stasis. This one was alright. Bottom of B tier, I'd say. I don't know, more than Apex 7 or what it's called. Stasis was the remake or remix of Talk. Um, the really snowy one, which was, it was like a pretty standard, like, three lane arena map, but it was okay. Um, I think I probably like it more than most people, because I remember a lot of people really didn't like Stasis, and I didn't dislike it, but on the same note, I also didn't like it. The Rig. The Rig is a top of B tier one for me. Um, it was not as good as Plaza. Plaza was definitely the better asymmetrical map in Halo 5, but the Rig was pretty good as well. I liked that little platform that Camo spawned on that you could shoot and have Camo fall down that had obviously a natural hazard in it as well. Natural hazards I'm always a fan of in maps. It spices it up and gives you something else to think about, and the Rig had quite a lot of that, which I appreciated. But it was mostly a Strongholds map, um, and I really don't like Strongholds, so it didn't do much for me in that respect. Talk, which was the normal version of Stasis. Talk was all right. It had those dynamic pistons that would come up and down. Uh, and I, I always thought it was quite cool that it was on like a artificial like ring based thing that was turning around. Although I don't normally get motion sickness, right? But looking up on Talk at like the ring thing moving around always gave me motion sickness. So I'm going to put it... Uh, it's on par with Stasis. Right then, this is gonna be weird. This is Truth, which is the remake of Midship from Halo 2. They made basically made Midship into a big team battle map. Um, but it wasn't bad in Halo 5 sense. It's so hard to judge this because if it were in any other game, I would just not like it at all. But because of how absurdly fast Halo 5's gameplay was, it kind of worked, I guess. I'm gonna put it in... I'm gonna put it there, right? Because it has midship's DNA, I can't deny that. And midship is, as you can see, one of the tied three best Halo maps of all time for me. Um, but I didn't like that thing in bottom mid. I didn't like how you could get to top mid from bottom mid at all. That damaged the pacing of the map for me completely. Like top mid, for me in a midship map, 
should be completely inaccessible besides car 3 and P2. They should be the only ways to get to top mid, which is why you put a sword there, right? The sword is a very powerful power weapon. It's meant to be very tricky to get to and very risky to get to. And it was so much less risky to get to in truth because of that like bottom mid like jump up. And also the fact that there were shields on top mid as well to stop you from getting shot from the bases and also from like P2 and car 3. Um, but it's nowhere near as good as midship, but I appreciate the efforts they put in to basically make midship a Halo 5 map. Tyron, um, even though I don't like Halo 5's foreigner art style at all, I thought the colour palette and overall aesthetic of Tyron was actually really good. And I also like some of the like, almost like floating jump rocks that you could use to get from base to base. But overall, bottom of B tier, um, it was okay. Uh, very claustrophobic in some areas, uh, and... The, the lanes that went around the outside of the map to where I think Sniper spawned were very simple. And with that, we're moving on to the final game, Halo Infinite. Aquarius, starting off with Aquarius. This is essentially Halo Infinite's version of midship. Um, I like Aquarius a lot. Top of A tier. Um, I would definitely not say it's an S plus tier map or an S tier map at all. But it's definitely top of A tier map for me. I think it plays really well in Infinite's gameplay. Um, it's a fantastic competitive map, but the issue is like Halo 5, Infinite Force for the issue of having loads of maps that are just seemingly purely made for competitive with casual not even being like a second thought, which kind of sucks. But for competitive, it's fantastic. So many routes to run a flag, bottom mid, uh, through to car side, P side. I think you can even throw it to top mid as well, which is always really cool. You can jump up to top mid with it as well. Uh, lots of cool routes to run the flag um, and good for Team Slayer as well, to be honest with you. I always like the standoffs that happen in the bases. So yeah, definitely a map with a lot of midships DNA coursing through its veins. Right, we gotta we gotta zoom out. We've got so many maps in here. We gotta zoom out. Let's uh, there we go. Right, uh, bizarre. No, thank you. Not a fan. Um, uh, C tier. Yeah, I don't like bizarre at all. To be honest with you, um, I like the fact that it's set in old Mombasa. That's cool. But the layout, I just I don't know. It's too balcony to balcony fighting for me. Bottom mid is too dangerous to go to. Um, overall, not a massive fan of bizarre. Behemoth. Right, I like Behemoth a lot. I don't know why they put it in ranked at launch. Behemoth with BR starts in Infinite is terrible, but Behemoth overall, I think is one of the most interesting maps in Infinite full stop. So Behemoth, I'm going to put bottom of S tier. Um, I really like it. It's the first map that we've had really since, I would say, Halo 3 that is a fantastic 4v4 vehicle map that's great for infantry and vehicles, um, even though Infinite's vehicles kind of suck really bad it's still good for them uh, and it's good for good for infantry combat as well ctf's great on it team slayer is great on it overall king of the hill i'm assuming is really good in it not played it yet but i'd assume it's pretty good uh but i love the aesthetic of it as well the aesthetic's so damn good it has a very like halo 3 foreigner style aesthetic which i appreciate a lot breaker is as much a last spot on standing map as it is a btb map for me um i'm gonna put breaker in b tier uh Bottom, right around there. I like the laser in the middle. Having a dynamic hazardous map element like that is very, very cool. And how that interacts with, say, the repulsor, like knocking people into it with the repulsor, or with the ramp in the middle, like knocking vehicles into it and stuff like that is, is very cool. Um, but besides that, I think the layout's a bit kind of... Eh, and not not a massive fan personally catalyst i really like catalyst it's gonna go in a tier um it beats aquarius but that's because of its aesthetic i'd say gameplay wise i like it a little bit less than aquarius but aesthetic wise i vastly prefer it to to aquarius the aesthetic of catalyst is so so good it's like a run down like reclaimed by nature version of epitaph which i really like with lots of natural waterfalls and then if you go to the back of the base and look out of the map the vistas, oh my god, they look so good. I know the pros don't really like it, but personally, I think it's a decent, like, competitive map. Definitely not amazing, but I think it's pretty good overall. The only issue I have is the bridge at the top is pretty inaccessible because the doors obviously block you off. Having the doors in the map is very cool, but I don't know if they work for the bridge at top mid. But besides that, I do really like it. it gives me Epitaph vibes, like a slightly more competitive version of Epitaph, I'd say. Deadlock, the BTV map set at night beneath the banished AA turret. Now, this map, the aesthetic of it, for some reason, always reminds me of Chapter 4 of Turok Evolution. When you're sneaking into the Slag base at night, it really reminds me of it. And having the AA turret, whenever something happens in the game, fire at that frigate in the sky is so, so sick. 
but the layout of it I think is okay. For me, Deadlock is a mid B tier map. I think, yeah, on, on par with on par with Timberland, I'd say. Um, it's it's good. The layout's decent, but the aesthetic I do like a lot. Fragmentation, another BTB map, is going to go around the same level, a bit higher. Um, it's not the best vehicle map because of how close everything is, and also the way that Infinite handles vehicles. <clears throat> Bloody hell. The way that Infinite handles vehicles, both in terms of their balancing and spawning, is just terrible. So vehicles aren't exactly the play on it. But I think for like an infantry uh, BTU map, it's pretty good. I love the like slightly grayer aesthetic to the map. It reminds me of like a Halo 2 era map, which I, I like a lot. And having the beam towers as well is great. <clears throat> Jesus. We got to round this video out soon. My voice is going. <laughs> and the hackable doors as well are such a cool mechanic. I'm kind of upset that that's not come back in any other map yet. I hope it comes back in another BTP map soon because having hackable doors that you have to hold off and then you get treats is a really cool idea. And then the last BTP map, we have high power. Um, high power, I also do like about the same in between deadlock and fragmentation. I think high power is aesthetically very pleasing. Having the frigate in the sky fire on the Covenant cruiser in the sky when anything happens in the game, just looks so, so cool. I always, whenever I get this map in BTB, I still stare at the frigate when it fires and just watch it. D doesn't matter what I'm doing, I stop and I stare at it. But yeah, it's a decent map layout, but pretty cool aesthetic with a very cool theming as well. Launch site, I think, is another B tier map. Um, I, again, funny enough, I like launch site a lot more than other people do. For some reason, everyone seems to hate launch site now. And I kind of get why, but on the same note, I do kind of enjoy it still because it's a 4v4 vehicle map, which we've not had for ages. And I think it, it works pretty well as one. It's definitely not high ground. It's definitely not a turf by any means, but it, it works well for what it's intended to. Live fire. Uh, live fire is okay. Um, probably my least, or well, one of my least favorite infinite 4v4 maps. Uh, the colour palette is really nice. I mean, the fact that it's the Avery J. Johnson Academy of Military Science is immediately a massive dub for me. How can it not be, right? But um, overall, the layout is very three-laney. Uh, very, very three-laney, in fact. Not particularly interesting. Um, my least favourite infinite arena map, I think. And ultimately, we have Recharge, which is one of the asymmetrical arena maps in infinite. And I think it's all right. I think Recharge is, is decent. It's pretty good. Great for Oddball, honestly, especially infinite's version of Oddball. Um, decent for strongholds, even though I don't like strongholds, and very good for Team Slayer. Uh, I like where the shock rifle spawns on that little platform, having that, like, separated is pretty cool. And the natural hazard risk of getting to the sword is very good. In fact, the entire, like, turbine section of the map I do like. The fact that Repulsa spawns there, very intentionally spawns there, mind you. Um, allows you to counter somebody with sword by knocking them off the map, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, it's a pretty good map, I'd say. It's, it's decent overall. And finally, we have Streets, the new Mombasa arena map. Streets is good for Oddball, good for Team Slayer. I don't like it for Strongholds, personally. Uh, I'm going to put Streets just a bit below Recharge, I would say. I think Streets is pretty good overall. Um, very claustrophobic, but it's kind of meant to be right because it's set in small, tight streets. That's that's pretty cool. It definitely feels like a map set in New Mombasa as well. I appreciate the aesthetic. It's quite a lot of good set dressing going on in that map as well. Uh, definitely a good competitive map, I'd say, in particular for Oddball. There are so many great places to hold Oddball in this map, um, and the, the meta for holding Oddball is forever changing on it. It's always changing, which is a sign of in my opinion, sign of a good map it means there's a lot of dynamic areas to it that can be used in different ways as players learn more about the map. So yeah, Streets, I think, is a pretty good arena map in Infinite. Definitely not as good as Catalyst or Aquarius, but pretty good. And so, there you have it. My rankings for every single Halo multiplayer map from Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, Halo 4, Halo Reach, Halo 1 Anniversary, Halo 5, and Halo Infinite. That was a long one, um, but I'm pretty happy with that list overall, I think. Quite a few maps in S plus tier, not to be surprised though. Um, a lot of Halo 1 maps and Halo 2 maps and Halo 3 maps, but I mean, the map design in those games is just so good. Halo 1 in particular. So many cool, unique maps in that game that are just unlike anything we get nowadays. I'd love to see a return one day to that kind of late 90s, early 2000s, like Quake, Counter-Strike, Unreal Tournament, Halo style of map design because I love it so much and I feel like there's a lot of untapped potential there. But yeah, there you have it. There's my tier list. As always, the link to do this if you want to do one yourself is in the description. So go check it out. And with that said, let's round this video out here. I want to give a massive thank you to my amazing patrons for their continued support over there. Thank you all so much. 
Thank you all so much for watching. In particular, if you watch all the way through to now, Jesus Christ, good on you. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you all in the next one.